Well, it is uh, week eight now, actually week nine of uh, 2020, but we skipped a week because I was gone, but um, uh, we're back and glad to be back. Uh, we have a interesting verse today that we're going to be looking at. The, the verse is Matthew 7, 7, and it is actually from uh, what they call the Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus was up on the mountain speaking to the people, and uh, he, he spoke this scripture um, at the time, and it, it's about prayer, and I have in my life had moments of uh, uh, a debate in my own heart and mind about this verse and what it means. And I hope today that through O.S. Hawkins, uh, this Joshua Code book, that we can have a better understanding of it at least. Uh, the goal of this uh, time spent uh, looking at this book and, and spending time with you on the internet or in class, wherever you're uh, doing this at, is to, yes, memorize uh, these 52 scriptures and know how these vital verses will maybe impact our life a little deeper, but also to uh, push into prayer a little bit more. <clears throat> As I looked through the book this week, I noticed that O.S. Hawkins outlined this verse uh, as three levels of prayer. Um, and we're going to look at that and see actually how he outlined it. And so... Um, we're going to start out by this first one. He said the part about uh, verse 7 of Matthew chapter 7 where it says, Ask and it shall be given to you is where he took this first point. But let's say the whole verse to begin with. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened to you. And so when he looked at this first section, ask and it will be given to you, he said that this is the first level of prayer, the level of presenting a petition. Um, maybe we've needed to, uh, in our life before to ask for help, but we didn't necessarily want to admit that we needed help. Uh, there are some people that have a difficult time saying, I need help. They know that they need help, but they don't want to admit it. And see, there, there is this level of uh, uh, pride that gets in the way sometimes of us even asking. But this is the... I guess the first level of prayer that he's saying that we must be willing to ask God and in asking we admit that, hey, we need help and that we uh, cannot uh, take care of it on our own. He said that the New Testament verbs of ask, seek, and find are in the present active imperative form. Now, I couldn't tell you anything about the grammatical form of that and what it necessarily means. But looking at this study, he means it, it is an active voice to say, as if to say, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. So in this first level uh, of those who pray uh, is that we just ask him and we keep on asking. Um, well, I, I don't know. Do you think, though, that we can ask whatever we want and expect to receive it? Maybe I'm wrong here, but I feel like we must know what God's will is in order to really expect that we can get an answer in that. I do know this, that we can ask God for forgiveness. We can ask him to come into our life. That is in his plan. That is in his will. So we can have confidence that he is going to uh, uh, answer that question that petition, ask, and it will be given to you. Um, I can still remember the first prayer that God ever answered for me. I was working at TSO, Texas State Optical, and it was my first job. I was called in to say, hey, we need you to work on the weekends, and I did not want to work on the weekend, and I prayed, and as much as I knew how, to pray and ask God that I would not have to work and it was an immediate response in that they came back to me only a few minutes later and said, no, we've changed our mind. We do not need you to work on Saturdays. And so <clears throat> it was a great thing. That's the first thing I've ever really asked uh, uh, God for that it was answered immediately. 
I can also remember the first prayer that I asked of God that was not answered. And it was when my uh, nephew was stillborn. Uh, my sister had a baby that was uh, had died in the womb and and was stillborn. And uh, I remember going to that service and and as a young boy, I was young, ten or eleven years old, eleven I think. And in my little faith that I had, I was praying that God would you raise him up out of the casket. I'm just saying that's where I was at that point in my life. And um, he. Of course, God did not answer that question, that petition for me. Well, as Hawkins says, though, there is a second level of uh, prayer, and you can take it for what you want it to be or, or not, or whether you believe that there's different levels or not. But he said there's a second level uh, of praying, and it is in this part about seek and you will find. He said it's the level of pressing a petition. We don't just petition God, but we press that petition. It's a higher level, according to him, than just a petition. Um, maybe a more mature prayer, if you will, when we've decided to say, you know what, I'm going to put myself aside and I'm going to push into this so much because I want to know, is an intense desire to know uh, God's will. Yes, we present our petitions to God, but then are we going to continue to press into those petitions? Uh, God said that, or uh, Owens Hawkins said that God uh, does not want to veil his answers, but he wants to reveal it, but it's through the petitioning of that, that we press into it. Um, we know the parable of the, the woman that went to the unjust judge and kept pressing and he did answer her, and, and we get a little bit of an example there. Um, but then this third level, he says, is a, a, a even more a, a deeper level. It, it really is a persevering a prayer, a, a really a determined heart. And he says this level is uh, of persisting with a petition. Not only do you press on the petition, uh, let, let's gather our thoughts here. You, you petition God, and then you don't hear anything, and you press into it, and then you persist in pressing. And this comes in those things where you know, you just fully believe that God, it is in his will for this to happen, but it just hasn't happened yet. And you keep pressing in it. Uh, uh, and, and you keep moving into that with a persisting heart. The example he gave is uh, of children <coughs> uh, learning in school. Um, he said, when they're small, we teach them to ask questions. They ask. They petition. When they get a little older, we teach them to look for answers themselves. They seek. And then when they're grown, we expect them to know how to um, find the answer uh, through persistence. They knock. They keep knocking. It's a continual keep knocking. So this prayer of knocking again deals with those things we really are fully convinced are in God's will and we keep pressing and we're persistent with that pressing of our petitions. Um, he says that in his book, O.S. Hawkins says that uh, prayer is responded to in uh, four different ways. He says one is direct prayer. It's immediately God answers it. Kind of like with my prayer about not wanting to work on the weekend. And then uh, the next one is a denied prayer uh, where it, it is, there's no, the answer is no. And that was uh, like uh, with my nephew that was uh, stillborn. And then there is a delayed prayer that um, God kind of puts us in a holding pattern for a while until that prayer is answered, maybe to teach us something, to grow us, to help us to become uh, aware of, of his presence or his work in our life. And, and then there is a different prayer answer and when God answers it differently than what we had prayed for. And in the long run, we look back and we're thankful that he answered it differently. So this week, as you memorize Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, uh, not only memorize that verse, but begin to petition God and then uh, press in those petitions if you know that it is God's will and be persistent 
in that um, in, in, in carrying out that prayer as we uh, try to live out this verse as much as possible. Matthew 7, 7, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Have a good week, guys. God bless you. I'll talk to you later.